Afghanistan continues to be in doubt after a rising number of deadly attacks on Western troops by Afghan soldiers, their supposed allies. As the so-called green on blue attacks increase, a peaceful transition of power is proving to be a difficult task. RT's Anastasia Churkina has more on that. The U.S. war in Afghanistan is known as the longest military conflict in American history. And as U.S. officials hope for a successful exit strategy by the year 2014, an alarming new trend is spiking on the ground, indicating that this may not happen so easily. U.S. troops have been dying at record rates in so-called insider attacks at the hands of their Afghan allies. At least 10 U.S. troops have been killed in these attacks in the last two weeks alone. This makes up for over 30 percent of U.S. military deaths in August. Throughout last year, there have been at least 40 such deaths in so-called green-on-blue attacks, where members of Afghan forces turn against Western troops. 69 people were wounded. In one of many attempts to tackle the increasing problem, a top U.S. general flew to Afghanistan this week to address the issue, only to have his plane become the target of a rocket attack. Experts say it's yet another sign of growing discontent in the war-torn country. As U.S. President Barack Obama says more needs to be done to protect U.S. troops from attacks by Afghans thought of as partners, the question of how exactly this should be done remains unanswered. Afghan officials have been attempting to spy on their own recruits to prevent these incidents, but reports are growing that members of the Afghan security forces are increasingly switching sides and defecting to support the Taliban. In one recent incident, four Afghan army officials were charged with supplying arms to the militants. Some experts explain the increased insider killings trend as a result of frustration with the length of the war. Others point to the fact that this comes after several scandals involving the conduct of U.S. troops on the ground, from Quran burnings to desecrating Afghan bodies by urinating on them, in shocking videos that made headlines around the world. The Afghan war is in its 11th year, and the fact that this year has seen more deaths from insider attacks than ever before is seen as a worrying trend for several reasons. The attacks have highlighted the disconnect between the U.S. to exit strategy to transfer most of the fighting power to Afghan forces by 2014, with the fact that the situation on the ground continues to be a lot more complicated than some U.S. officials try to downplay. With chaos on the ground, the question of whether the U.S. involvement deadline is feasible looms large. Anastasia Churkina, RT, Moscow. Political activist Dr. Mohammed Daoud Miraki says that the actions of U.S. soldiers in Afghanistan have provoked the recent wave of attacks. The U.S. troops are entirely to blame for this, the reason being that uh, the uh, presence of the U.S. forces in NATO uh, in Afghanistan is nothing but an occupation, and occupation itself has consequences. In Afghanistan, they created an artificial economy, and there was no productivity of anything of any sort. They created these institutions, uh, very artificial institutions, the army and the police, mostly led by the Northern Alliance, and uh, and people had no other income. They ended up uh, employing, uh, being employed as police or soldier, but they had their principles and values intact. On the one hand, they had to feed their families. On the other hand, they had to defend their honor, namely uh, against the U.S. forces in NATO. And of course, and they had seen the atrocities committed by American soldiers, the Quran burning, the secretion of the bodies, etc., etc. If you compare the $500 billion infused in Afghanistan compared to the gains in Afghanistan, there is absolutely total disconnect. Let's take a look at some other stories.